Hey everybody, welcome back to your new favorite podcast while you were drinking. This is a podcast by a couple for couples who like to drink. Don't forget to like and subscribe. As the kids say, smash that like button. Smash it. Smash it like those little whack-a-mole games in the arcade. Smash it. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> uh, also check out our YouTube mini show, Two Blind Mice, where we blind taste test a couple of whiskeys and wines. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at While You Were Drinking Podcast, as well as our individual handles. Uh, and you can email us. Uh, go ahead and shoot us an email if you have a topic you'd like us to talk about or a particular type of alcohol you'd like us to try. We are open to your suggestions and we would love for you to rate and review. And let us know how you think. I agree. Let's start the show. Let's do it. Welcome, 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 welcome back to another episode of While You Were Drinking. Let's get the show started off. Oh, first off, free Bobby Schmurder. Welcome back. Um, but let's get the show started right with a drink. Today, I'm drinking Lineage by Balconis. It's a Texas-based, White Waco, Texas-based Waco. distillery. They have that unique Texas funk on the nose, mm-hmm. which you've grown accustomed to. Um, this was a lineage. It was a special release, I think, from two years ago. It smells and tastes just like Stroop waffles to me. <laughs> I, no one's ever gotten that when they smell it or taste it, but yeah. it's like straight up the like the waff like the toasted waffle with the caramel in the middle. Smells just like it. You get so many scents and flavors that I don't get out of whiskey. I'm like, this smells like whiskey. That's because I have an open <laughs> mind, Shay. I'm a thinker. Yeah, you're a thinker. <laughs> <laughs> and right. I think you should tell me what you're drinking. <laughs> All right. I am drinking this Roe Pitou. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. French is hard for me. But I believe it is mm-hmm. Roe Pitou. This is a rosé de Pinot Noir. So basically it's a rosé made from Pinot Noir grapes. Um, mm-hmm. I love me some Pinot Noir. And I've been on a big rosé kick. So I bought this bottle kind of blind, thinking I would be into it. It was on sale. Um, and I have had a glass or two already. And it is super dry and very <laughs> acidic. And it is, a.k.a. my my kind of rosé. I don't like sweet rosés. I don't mm. really like sweet ro- wine anyway, but this is like perfectly dry. It's like this beautiful color pink. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is like a rosé I could see myself drinking all year round for sure. Yeah. The opposite of how I like my prison pockets. Dry. <laughs> and pink. <laughs> Are you going to toast me? Oh yeah, sorry. To you and to you. All right. Speaking of having two or three glasses. Mm. One of my biggest pet peeves on earth is smash release, as we've established. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> There's nothing less attractive than someone who can't hold their alcohol. Am I wrong or am I wrong? Wait, am I right or am I right? Yes or yes. Yes or yes. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. <laughs> no, you're right. I... I mean, and maybe this is as a, like I'm biased because I can hold my alcohol. That's true. But I was actually just saying to someone the other day, I think one of my coworkers, I was like, you know, I knew Curtis was it like the first time I ever saw him like basically blackout drunk and I had almost no idea. (laughs) Like I was like, this is the man for me. Like he can clearly hold his own. Right. He can hold it together. Yeah. And I was like, this is the one, man. Yeah. My, my friends will definitely tell you like. It's kind of like a running theme with some of my friends that like they can never tell when I'm drunk, Mm -hmm. no matter like at what point of the night, because like I don't have like a like a fucked up phase. I'm just (laughs) like I'm chill the whole way through and then I just pass out Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like it's zero to a hundred and then zero. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's never any like 
I'm ramping up. I'm starting to slur my words. I'm tipsy. It's literally just zero to a hundred, hundred being passed out. Yeah. I think the only reason I figured it out is because you said something or I had seen, like we had been, at this point we had been dating for a little while. So I had seen you drink enough. Yeah. And like just, you know, being around someone, being intimate with someone, like dating them, you kind of, you start to just pick up on things that maybe like a person at a bar wouldn't. And I think mm, I just, something mm-hmm. was just a tiny bit off about you. Not quite. Just <laughs> yeah. a sm- like a hair. Yeah, yeah. And then the next like morning you were like, oh my God, I was so, so drunk. And I was up. like, aha, that's what it was. That tiny, <laughs> <knew it. laughs> tiny differential. I'm the same way. I like told yeah. somebody once like, oh, like I don't, I don't have like that in between drunk phase either. It's the same mm-hmm. thing. It's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm asleep. And gone. Yeah. <laughs> every so often, every so often I will something about like what I'm drinking or how fast or just I'll hit that spot where I do have that kind of like slightly sloppy phase. Yeah. Like I'll, right. sl- the words will slur a little, right. but it's never to the point where I'm like yeah, embarrassing myself or like I'm waking up the next morning like, oh my God. What did like, I do? Yeah. What have I done? I've had like one or two instances like that yeah. and it hasn't been recent. Well, like early drinking, it's fine. Like when you're yeah. like early college, like first learning to drink, learning your tolerances. But like if you're over like 25 yeah. and you're obnoxious yeah. as a drunk person, Mm-mm. get your it's shit together. It's not a together. cute look. It's not Get cute. your shit together. Okay. <laughs> I think I was okay. like 23 or 24 where I had one night where I... I think it might be the only time I ever really blacked out. I've always like, like legit a, blacked out, legit blacked out. Blacked out. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause I was like in college, I just, I didn't really drink. I like drank a lot my freshman year. Cause I was like, what well, you, you know, you, it's new and it's exciting you and you do it. Yeah. As and then, one does. As one does. And then that kind of like lost the appeal. And I just got really like, I leaned heavy into smoking weed and I actually didn't drink from like sophomore year, junior year. I, barely drank at all. I was mm-hmm. just aggressively high all the time. Oh yeah. You transitioned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then it wasn't until like after I turned 21, like I think even at 21, I was like still not interested in it. And it was around mm-hmm. like 22, 23 that I was like, Oh yeah. Drinking. That's the thing. Oh yeah. Remember that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think I never see, I was the exact opposite. Like I had my, I started with like weed and pills and like hard drugs. And then I transitioned to drinking. Mm. Like, Um, you know, for various reasons, like I started as a kid with like, you know, heavier shit and then, you know, weaned off of all of that stuff. (laughs) And, uh, then later in life, like I kind of just settled into drinking. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I enjoy alcohol more than anything else. Yeah. I obviously still smoke. And I think it's, it's more, it's more of a experience Mm -hmm. like with alcohol it's like it's like a like there's ceremony to it and like making a cocktail for yourself at home or like pouring a good glass of whiskey whereas like most drugs it's it's fueled by addiction and alcohol for some people too is Mm -hmm. fueled by addiction but for me luckily it's not it's very much a a pleasure center yeah yeah but not in like a requirement is in a, an actual, I'll have, you know, a couple drinks and be happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Little uh, conversational lube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was, it's so ring. funny. I've been noticing, like, as we start buying these, like, more expensive bottles of whiskey. I mean, I, I think, like, I, you know, I definitely look older than 21 now at this point. Yeah. I think I still have the face of youth, but mm-hmm. I definitely carry myself in, like, a, um, you looked younger um, with a shaved head. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I think it's the length of this haircut. I think mm. that like gives me, that makes me look older. Because oh. when my hair was really long, I felt like I looked More younger. childish? Ooh. Yeah. And then okay. also I was just reading something um, recently I've been like leaning hard into like the cancer influencer stuff. <laughs> How to be a cancer. <laughs> How to be influencer. a cancer influencer. <laughs> step one: get cancer. <laughs> um, step two: influence. Uh, <laughs> no, but I've been getting into it just because it's nice to. I don't know. Like I wait, know getting that, into what? 
getting into just like leaning heavier into like talking about my experience with cancer. Oh, okay, and, okay, and okay. Stuff okay. like that. Sorry, I missed um, that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been leaning into getting cancer. Yeah, you know, cool. I've been trying. You know, it's not really for everybody, hard. but like, I'm. I was kind of the first one to do it in my friend group. No yeah, big deal. It's really a trendsetter here. Brag much? First one to get cancer. <laughs> <laughs> be like everyone's like 80 getting cancer I'm yeah, like, right. i did in my 20s <laughs> in this break brought to you by johns hopkins <laughs> do you think uh, let it finish oh. do you think johns hopkins would take us on as a sponsor god i wish that'd be sweet Anything, Johns Hopkins, I'm, if you're listening, John or Hopkins, either one of yeah, you, we're, we're cool we would one love to hear from you <laughs> about potential monetary support to this podcast. Yeah, God knows I've supported you and your doctors for quite a lot and will continue to do so for another four years. <laughs> <laughs> At minimum. Yeah. Oh, okay. But what I was saying before. Oh, yes. Um, Sorry. Cancer influencer. Cancer influencer. <laughs> now I've been like, just like reading more and like trying to find other people my age who have had a similar experience. Um, mm-hmm. Cause it's a small community. And uh, I was reading something where somebody was expressing about, you know, how chemo really aged them. And mm. like that hit me really hard. Cause I was just like, you're right. Like I, like chemo, it does something to you where like you... Well, doesn't it like kill every cell yeah, in your body, every, yeah. basically? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't but like that the point? <laughs> uh, you know, I just like, like you would think that once it's out of your system, like, okay, you're done. But it has right. like a residual effect. Like I'm foggier. I have a harder time concentrating. Yeah. Like I can't remember as well as, as I used to. Yeah. And it just, it's like that permanent brain fog. Yeah. Um, And my skin just... <laughs> you push the wah, wah, wah button. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, my skin also, like I look at photos of myself from two years ago, which is mm-hmm. not that long ago. Right. And I'm like, damn, I look so much younger. Like I look, <laughs> keep pushing these buttons. <laughs> I think that was crickets. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I feel like I look a lot older. Yeah. Like so, you mean like in your face or like in, in your face. body? Well, in my body too. Mm. Like I just feel... Like, I think that's just called being 30. I think the chemo exacerbated it too a little bit. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> 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 so when you when you do chemo, is it purely like intravenous or do you have to like swallow pills or anything? For me, it was just intravenous. Okay. Um, I took uh, a, a steroid pill. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm totally blanking on the name now, but it's super nasty. It's like not coated. Coated? It's not. Oh, like coated. The, okay, oh. okay. Coated. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just taking some experimental it's drugs. It's hard didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, that's got to be terrible for you. You're fucking terrible at swallowing pills. <laughs> They were it's, awful. It was so it's bad. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. I've gotten a lot better. I can do... You're learning. I can do five of the like the coated ones at a time. So mm-hmm. I take like the juice plus capsules, mm-hmm. take a fish oil, I take yeah. a prebiotic and a vitamin D. And they're all like, they have right. that kind of like glossy coating on them. Yeah. yeah. So they, do, they slide down yeah, easier. I can do five of those. But then the, yeah. the collagen pills are not coated. Mm. They like stick together. It's like weird. So I have, those are tough. I can't What's do What's the those. difference between a prebiotic and a probiotic? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know. Like one's still in college. One made it to the league. Yeah. One was in division one and the one's other one's paid like well. division four. <laughs> Pay college athletes. That's what I really want to say about that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I'm luckily, I don't have that problem at all. I what? can swallow things like it's nobody's business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all that time in prison really helped you out, huh? Yep. That is correct. That's what you're talking about with the prison pocket. That is also correct. <laughs> 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 is it, wait, no, prison wallet, something pocket. It's your prison wallet and then your something pocket. Maybe it's both. Prison purse. I don't know. <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. You know what I mean. I <laughs> yeah, mean my asshole. <laughs> Man, we've really gotten spicy since the last episode. I know. I'm on a kick. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it was interesting, like, the last episode, like, kind of talking about, like, more, like, uh, risque, risque topics. 
just a little more like um, sensitive topics. Yeah, they're pushing, they're edgier. They're, you know, there's definitely some, there's room for uh, offend, offending people or isolating mm-hmm. people, having controversy. I don't know. I think that that, I think we would have gotten boring if we hadn't. Boring. Boring. We had a boring <laughs> drop. That's probably like the laugh track. I think we would have gotten boring if we hadn't had, yeah, like spiced it up a little. Because you just, I mean, I don't. I want to listen to people push the boundary and like be a little edgy. Like that's yeah. the kind of stuff yeah. I want to listen to. I don't want to listen to people talk about safe <laughs> topics. Yeah, well, like that's what's interesting about it is like not being able to like pushing the boundaries of like what is acceptable. Like that kind of like experimentation and thought process is what's interesting to me. Yeah. And I think like, it's sad because I think our culture today is so, I guess, like unforgiving of mm. people experimenting with ideas, exploring things. Yeah. Saying things mm. that maybe later they're like, oh, you know, like maybe that wasn't really the best or, you mm-hmm. know, I've learned something since then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, well, that's also like how you learn yeah. things is by going into them yeah you say something and then somebody says something to you and you reassess whether or not you come to that same conclusion you know it doesn't mean that the other person is the right or you're the right yeah. but you know you at least can have a dialogue about it yeah and i'm on the right today if you didn't notice that's true we, we switched s- spots switched it up a little because we just switched locations yeah we figured we'd give you guys something different to look at. Switch it up. Switch it up. Check out Curtis's whiskey collection. My pared down whiskey collection. Yeah, right. That's half pa- boxed up for reasons we cannot speak of. <laughs> it was also just not, it wasn't starting, it just wasn't fitting in there. Yeah, it was true. We packed out the whole thing. Yeah. You're st- yeah I don't know. It, it is interesting, like, like how counterculture kind of like shifted to being this like kind of like edgy push back against like the establishment and like you know mainstream ideas and like the whole like allure of like you know the velvet underground and like the new york art scene was like it's pushed back against like orthodoxy and like moralism conservative values (laughs) yeah or just like not even necessarily conservative but just like group think and like the thing that made it cool was that it was challenging ideas that everyone just kind of like agreed on. Yeah. Whereas now like a lot of like kind of what people see as like counterculture has become like highly like unified under like very specific thought patterns and ideas. Mm -hmm. And it's like this weird moralism that used to be kind of like for the conservative right like the church grandmas saying like pornography is going to ruin the world. It's yeah. killing the family. Like that same idea has been like transitioned into like the modern art scene. And it's like this, like everybody has to like walk on eggshells and like not truly express themselves mm-hmm. or be honest with their thought processes out of like fear. Yeah. And it's that same like moral tyranny that's like driving a lot of like modern counterculture whereas before it was the whole point of counterculture (laughs) was to push back against that whole idea in the first place (laughs) oh how the turntables oh how the (laughs) turntables parks and rec maybe i don't know i don't know i feel like that i think it is parks and rec i was thinking no uh, i think it's uh the office Mm. I said Parks and Rec just to be a dick because I know a lot of people that love The Office watch this show. <laughs> He's the weird one who doesn't get, get into The Office. So Says the one who didn't get the quote. I'm pr- I don't think it's The <laughs> Office. I, I think it is. I wanted to say it was Arrested Development. Yeah. So speaking of the art scene, what's your like favorite area in Baltimore, having grown up here? Because hmm. I have an opinion. Yeah. As a transplant. What your but, favorite spot is? Yeah. Because, like, um, for being from a city in the south and having traveled to a lot of cities, 
it's rare that you find cities like Baltimore where it's 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 almost like a mini New York. Mm -hmm. Like it's very segregated and it's very like, like borough-ized, <laughs> basically, right? It's yeah. it's a collection of neighborhoods that surrounds kind of like the heart of downtown's, you know, commercial bank district and shit. Yeah. Um I forgot where I was going that with that. What my favorite Part yes, of? what's your favorite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what's like your favorite area in Baltimore? Well, what do you, what do we have? We have uh, Fed Hill. You have Canton. Canton. You have Locust Point. You have Hamden. Hamden, Mount Vernon, Bolton Mount Hill, Vernon, like Charles, Charles North, Village, Station North. Yeah. Um, you have like the downtown downtown area. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's the what's the Canton? Did we already say that? One? Canton. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, Harbor East, where you work. Harbor East, Harbor East. Inner Harbor. Mm. Um, uh, oh, my God. Butcher's Hill. Yeah. But uh, it's cool because they all, like, despite being, like, a relatively small city, they all have kind of, like, their own vibe. Yeah. Right? Oh, for sure. And I've spent more time in some than others. Like, I've lived in Hamden and Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. um, and I fucking hated Hamden the first time I went. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm going to say I think Hamden might be my favorite. I really liked living yeah. in Mount Vernon because it was so centralized and I could walk, you know, from Mount Vernon, I could walk downtown, I could walk mm -hmm. to the harbor. Well, you can't do that in Hamden. I love the architecture of Mount Vernon, though. Yes. Like it's 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 the one spot in the city that actually feels like a city. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, beautiful architecture, a lot of brownstones, a lot of like, you know, fire escapes and yeah. like actual like old architecture yeah, yeah that's I like that. what i like about mount vernon have you been to bolton hill it's like oh. the neighborhood like right above kind of like mount vernon it's near micah like past like where like the charles theater and orto and all that shit is uh mm, like further north than that mm, bolton hill doesn't ring a bell i'm i'm like trying to picture it on a map now but it's like oh. yeah it's kind of like north and like over a little I might be butchering this. I've been forgetting to hit the new drink button. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Going through it today. Um, but Bolton Hill, yeah, it's right by Micah. So it's like literally above Mount Vernon. It's like in between Mount Vernon. It's kind of low. No, because they split off. So it's like Mount Vernon and then you have like Bolton Hill and like Station North is kind of like over You're here. You're killing the podcast right now. I know. I'm this sorry. is the most boring thing I've <laughs> ever heard in my entire life. Shay does geography. <laughs> Which we've already Poorly. established you're not good at. <laughs> anyway, <So. laughs> my dream home is in Bolton Hill. I was but what she means to say it's in like East Baltimore. Shut it's, up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, her it's her north of Mount Vernon is like east of uh, <laughs> what's the Dundalk. <laughs> There's no. no telling where Bolton Hill it's is. Not. Don't trust her at all. <laughs> uh, my dream home is in Bolton Hill. I was walking around there one day, just like, mm -hmm. just walking, literally taking a walk. And I've never been able to find the house again, but whoever it was had like all of their kind of blinds raised so I could see directly into the house. Right. And it was... Oh, so you're a peeping Tom. They opened the windows. They were open. That doesn't mean you have to look. Well, I was walking by and I looked. Anyway, they have, it was like they had opened up the house so that it... Don't look. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> My they, point exactly. They had opened up the house so that you could see this like gorgeous spiral staircase and the kitchen was like on the lower level and they had this like open kind of concept. It was so cool and I'm, I've yeah. never been able to find the house again. Oh. So it was just like a random yeah. trounce about. I bet you like they shut their blinds and I'll like I'll never find it. Because I was oh, yeah, looking true. at the inside of the house and I wasn't paying much attention to the outside. Yeah. That is that is true. Yeah. I remember the first time I went to uh Hamden, I went to Johnny Rockets, is that a thing? Or is that that's like a pizza place or something? That's Johnny Rad. Jo but no, that's not no, no, no. Hamden. What's the it's kinda like Rocket to Venus? Maybe that sounds right. It's, it's kind of like off the strip and like down yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah. Ways. So I went yeah. there just randomly. Like I was just walking around. I'd never been there before. And uh, so I walk into the bar and there's like an older guy and his wife. And he's probably like 50 mm -hmm. and clearly like on some shit. <laughs> and uh, Camden, hun. So I came, you know, I just walked in by myself and sat next to him at the bar. 
it was pretty relatively empty, like a few like couples around the bar and like these um this couple were like already pretty blitz and it was probably like 3 p.m. Hamden, hun. And so we just start, we, you know, we start chatting it up. Like I'm pretty, like I'm a very much not judgmental person. Like mm-hmm. I actually enjoy people like that. Like I want to engage with those people. And so like he, he, he he's just yelling. He's kind of like, buy, like trying to be like this loud, boisterous. He's like buying people drinks and we're kind of just talking and so the reason that they were there and that drunk that early in the afternoon, apparently the night before, this guy's this guy and his wife had been mugged in Hamden. <laughs> oh no. And so they had like just gone through this whole like crazy process and apparently they had gotten the security footage from they were like just walking through like a auto zone or some something like that. Yeah. And um so you see, he shows me the footage on his phone and like you see him like walking across and she's like follow him, following him. It's like, you know, early in the morning. And you see this guy like walk up and attack the guy mm-hmm. to try to mug him. Mm-hmm. And then you see her like run behind them and like jump on this, the mugger's back and like just starts <laughs> wailing on him. Oh just my wailing God. on him. It's like going batshit Karen. <laughs> <laughs> And so the whole, the, for the next like two hours, we're just like talking shit and just like having a blast. He, he'd bought me like five shots of whiskey. Like I was blitzed. But then like, it was interesting. The reason that like, I didn't like him in the first few times I went because like all the other people there were kind of like my age, mm. kind of like hipster type, a little artsy. Like, I mean, you know, and Hamden is kind of like, yeah, I mean like me, but not a douche. I'm a douche. I'm just kidding. (laughs) So me, but like not as judgy, but still a douche. That makes sense. (laughs) But so like it was my first time going there. And like, so like my taste for Hamden was like instantly like, like, okay, this is like a, a bunch of like judgy, like douchey, like fake artists who probably actually just like trust fund kids, like fetishizing being poor and an artist. Damn, harsh words for Hamden. Am I wrong? <laughs> no. <laughs> but then that guy changed your no. opinion. But no, no, no. It was just it was just hilarious that like that that was like my first interaction with Hamden and thinking like, oh, this area sucks. Like all the all the people around here are kind of assholes. Yeah. Except for this guy. Not so much because of that guy. Like he was, you know, he's being a clown, but like the way that like everyone else at the bar reacted to him was mm-hmm. very like Judgy. Judgy and like, like ugh, this fucking guy with his fucking loud noises and how dare he. <laughs> well, Hamden's interesting because, so I lived there for. <clears throat> when we, high five. I was like, are we making a turkey? Like what's that was, happening? That was me just like celebrating. <laughs> but then... Me finally burping into the mic. That was a good one too. Turkey. Uh, actually, I think it's supposed to go like this, right? Oh, yeah, yeah you got to put the head out. Yeah. All right, next time. Anyway, uh, we haven't ma- mastered the celebratory <laughs> turkey yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're still working on it. Give us a chance. <laughs> so I lived in Hamden for a year and some change. And Hamden is interesting because it is it is really like a mix of like old, old Hamdenites mm-hmm. who are, a lot of them are like, meth heads <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh but like and they're there and they're really like digging their heels mm-hmm. in and then you have all Refusing the like young kind of artsy transplant like families you mm-hmm. know young families and stuff like that coming in too so it's this weird like clash of uh, cultures not as impressive as mine but we can right. still turkey where's the want 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 don't leave me hanging thank you <laughs> 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 yeah it's a mix so yeah, there is an a interesting mix bag. clash yeah 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 like on my, even yeah. on the block that i lived on it was like 
us, we were renting the house and like the next mm-hmm. door neighbor was this like, she'd probably been there for forever. Mm-hmm. Definitely didn't thought we were like practicing like witchcraft in the backyard. Well, it's because you were. Yeah, it's true. Obviously. Yeah, sacrificing cats and stuff. Uh, and then the guy next to her was all like, same thing, like a young dude. I think he owned the house, but like same, like, and then across the street, it was like a whole row of like been there for forever Hamdenites. Mm. So, yeah. I guess I'll say all that to say, like, don't judge a book by its cover. Give places a second chance. Because I think also Hamden is probably, in hindsight, one of my favorite places in Baltimore. Yeah. Despite my initial distaste. (laughs) 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 Yeah, it was just like a bunch of, uh, like, um... I got nothing. Okay. All right. Got nothing. Brain fart. Well, that's what happens when you get old. Because <laughs> you are now uh, 34. That is correct. It was recently, just my birthday. Recently had a birthday. And uh, I'll cheers to that. Yeah. My favorite groundhog. Yeah. That's me. Don't tell these people my birthday. They're going to steal my identity. <laughs> I'm watching you. Okay, ready? You got a glug, glug, glug. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Glug, glug. Beautiful. 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 Okay. Also, shout out to Julia. Thank you for this oh, yeah. wine cooler. Yeah, she sent us like a cute little wine cooler. So cute. Very, very useful. I know. Right? Coming in handy. Keeps my wine Keeping that rosé all day. Cold all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I want to switch it up, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, just it was just my birthday. Just your birthday, and we had to. I had to get creative with the COVID birthday. You did, yeah. But I will say you did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Tell the people what you've done. <laughs> well, I have to preface because you. I celebrated my birthday in July, and Curtis really like went all out because. I mean, we were still like in the height of quarantine. I mean, we're still kind of in the height of quarantine, but we were really mm. in the height of quarantine. And I had, I was turning 30 and I wanted to do like this big party and just, it wasn't going to happen. Great Gatsby themed. Yeah. So you did this, like, you kind of like, you know, hit the ball out of the park for my birthday. We had like a, you know, cake eating and birthday mm-hmm. gifts and like, there was kind of like a... F- middle school field day style outdoor yeah. activity with like there were games race and a pinata yeah so you really went all out youtube but, slash curtis inman if you want to see the video that's true there is video proof <laughs> um we'll put the link in the in the description here mm. that reminds me sorry to interrupt but this will be coming out the day of a book release that i made a trailer for yeah it's called while you while, while you were drinking. It's not called While You Were Drinking. That's what this is. It's called Why We Cook by uh, Lindsay Gardner. It's yeah. a really cool uh, illustrated book where she like collected the stories and essays and recipes of a lot of um, female chefs. Okay. okay, back to birthday. So? So you went all out and you filmed it. I did not film your birthday, sadly. Uh, I mean, I have like an iPhone video, but that's it. (laughs) (laughs) Also, I mean, it's like, it's cold out in February. So it was, I had like very Mm -hmm. limited options. Like I couldn't set anything up outside because it was like wet and kind of snowy and just nasty outside. It's not somewhere you want to be. So I was really limited to the inside of the house. Um, But I set up kind of like a camping theme Mm -hmm. to birthday. So I put like a, a tent, a bed, a bed sheet over our bed. And mm-hmm. then I did like a, you know, yeah. kind of like line Starry under the stars. Yeah, yeah. I did like string yeah. lights across it. Um, and, and then in the living room, you did like a, a, a campfire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have the, like a, a fire pit that I'd put also string lights in and you mm-hmm. plug it in. It kind of looks like a campfire. A fireplace. Yeah, campfire with like marshmallows vibe. Yeah. and, yeah. you know, hot chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that was as far, that was probably all that we got out of the camping thing. We deviated really <laughs> hard after that because I, I was like, oh, I could lean in and give you hot dogs and hamburgers and like camp food. Yeah, a s'more? A s'more. I had the s'mores. S'more or what? S'more that dick. S'more what? <laughs> um, 
That was, yeah, that was where I deviated. I was like, I'm not going to serve you hot dogs on your birthday, like, no matter how on theme they are. So I made you carbonara. Yes, and it was fantastic. It was so good. (laughs) Uh, And I bought you a bottle of whiskey, which... I'm already packed up. Oh, it's packed up, but I got him the cream of Kentucky. Yes, she I tracked did. it down. I drove to Timonium <laughs> and like bought their last bottle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, a good find. A very good find. And it I was, got you the ring. It was also very good. Oh, yeah, and she got this ring. Yeah, a little, little gold ring off of Etsy. Brushed gold. I'm doing a good job modeling it. Yeah, because we don't... That's everything you thought it would be. <laughs> basically have a career as a hand model. by the spring. Okay. <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> well, you don't like the shiny gold either, so I had mm. to make sure it was brushed gold. Yeah, definitely. Matt, I like the shiny Matt gold. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Matt everything. <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt. Matt, 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 Matt. I feel like Packages are still being delayed from USPS. It's not true. It's, it's a conspiracy. It's definitely true. It's not true. My yes or yes sweater took forever to it get It did. Here. It took like two months too long. It landed in a Baltimore distribution center and then it sat there for mm-hmm. a good week. And it was like supposed to be here in time for Valentine's Day and that was not the case. Ugh, that would have been perfect. I know. Just a giant heart. Yes or yes. Yes or yes. It's okay. I'll use it next year. Yeah. Well, I, it's funny you say that. Actually, I ordered some Crocs the other day and they still haven't come in. It's because you didn't order them. You, it's a lie. You, you, you don't know that. You hate Crocs. You don't know that. I've changed my mind. Okay, wait. I'm a new man. Episode you- four has changed me. And I am pro Crocs. Let it be known. I don't care. How soft my dick gets when I see them. I don't care how ridiculous the little thingies people like stick in the holes <laughs> to make them look like a donut or a pine tree or a Christmas tree. I don't care how comfortable they are. Okay, would you rather Crocs I will wear or them. Uggs? Ooh. You had to pick. Ugh. Ugh. Which one? If I had to choose between Crocs or Uggs. Yeah. Hmm. So hear me out. Crocs at least have functunality. Like I know like nurses are huge on them because mm-hmm. they're like super comfortable yeah, for like long hours because they're like foam, right? Yeah. And they're breathable. Mm-hmm. So your feet don't stink when you come home. That's true. As bad. Maybe you should get a pair of Crocs then because your feet smell My feet are disgusting. (laughs) It's genetics. I can't help it. It's so bad. I was born this way, you fetalist. (laughs) All right, Lady Gaga. You're a fetalist, and I was born this way. (laughs) Cancel her. She doesn't believe. She is a bigot towards people (laughs) with stinky feet. Her (laughs) Instagram is... Shay underscore L I. <laughs> cancel, 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 cancel. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not canceling people that you care about, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> cancel your friends, cancel your family. <laughs> <sighs> I just don't see any utility in Uggs. They're warm as shit. Yeah, there's a lot of warm shoes. Like what? Other boots that have linings of various fur types. How many breathable foam shoes do you see on the market? Other than Yeezys that are like $600 or however much they are. They look like a spaceship. They're literally just a croc that's in a different shape. (laughs) An expensive croc. Yes. Uh, But I mean, that's kind of Kanye's whole shtick, right? Expensive like, loungewear. Not even, well, not even expensive. Like his whole shtick since the beginning has just been take whatever's not cool and use his Kanye brand to, to make, make it, it cool. cool. Like polos and backpacks, like baggy clothes. 
Like during the whole like skinny jean era, he was the one like pushing baggy clothes, like him and Virgil. Um, Crocs. Crocs. Like these crazy ass shoes, like that like have like this weird unique silhouette. His like weird water socks that he tried to make a thing once upon a time. Like being a Trump supporter. (laughs) (laughs) That's literally been his shtick since day one. Whatever. He's not a creative genius. He literally just bucks whatever the trend is. (laughs) Whatever like the cool thing is, the opposite of that, he just takes that and tries to make it cool. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Anti cool is his whole shtick. It's not unique. It's just a, a shtick. Yeah. I say in my living room of a small home while he resides in mansions and has yeah. <laughs> <laughs> international fashion brands. <laughs> what do I know? What does he know? You're I'm just- the one you should listen to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. I haven't eaten anything today <laughs> and I'm drunk. <laughs> I tried to feed you dinner and you did not want it. <laughs> this is my dinner <laughs> whiskey whiskey dinner <laughs> whiskey dinner uh, okay wait no. sorry so crocs I was, i'm going too big oh fuck me so i mean maybe later but <laughs> this ad break brought to you by what's your birth control called Nuva ring. No. no. I have a copper IUD. <laughs> Paragard. That's what it is. Nailed it. I know what's in my body. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Allegedly. Thanks, Bill Gates. Yeah. Uh, all right. Stop mm. dodging the question. Fine. I'll answer it. If I had to choose gun to my head, Crocs, or Uggs. I'm choosing Crocs Mm -hmm. only because of the versatility. Got it. There are some Crocs. Uggs are only a cold weather shoe. You can wear Crocs to the beach. You can wear them to work. You can wear them TikTok. You can wear them to your grandmother's funeral. You can wear them to the beach. I also, I already said that, but that's okay. (laughs) I will say, so I, as someone who owns Crocs and Uggs, <laughs> I know this might be the end of our relationship. It's been nice guys. The last episode of while you were drinking <laughs> next week, just Curtis, <laughs> uh, my solo podcast where I rant about the government while and- I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> A solo podcast for the whole family. (laughs) Someone who owns multiple pairs of Crocs. Multiple? Yeah. What's it? So I've only seen the like thing. You've seen the donut rainbow. Oh, the donut, the donut ones. I forgot about those. The donut Crocs. Those are the real, real Crocs. They are like the true, like slide in with the little like flap on the back. Yeah. I got. I bought those to go tubing for a like during a for a bachelorette party because like we needed that's water. the worst shoe you could possibly take no, it's, not. it's perfect They're they waterproof. fall off your feet so easy no they don't because of the strap in the back you you flip the strap backwards so it like is an enclosed shoe they stayed on my feet the whole time we went rat we went uh tubing in west virginia and they were perfect i bought them specifically for that anyway i also own a pair my of- name is curtis <laughs> I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I like long walks on the beach. I'm 34, but I'm very successful. I have a full-time job. And you're and newly I'm single. Looking for- <laughs> <laughs> As of this moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I own many pairs of Crocs, and I think that you chose correct because there are mm, lots of mm-hmm. Crocs that don't look like Crocs, whereas Uggs always look like Uggs. No, 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 no. See, when I say Crocs, I mean like the Crocs. The, the Crocs. I don't mean like Croc branded things. Okay. That doesn't count. That's like... You're talking true ugly Crocs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugly shoe for ugly shoe. Ugly shoe for ugly shoe. I, exactly. oh, I looked at a pair of like Ugg slides today. 
They were like Why? neon yellow and they were so cool. They Be honest. Slide. So I today. Them. Obsessed. I love them. Yesterday I replaced the plumbing for our sink. Did you only leave the house so that you wouldn't accidentally use the sink? Be honest. Mm, I don't think I did. I was using the a sink in the bathroom. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, all the dishes have piled up in the kitchen. <laughs> yes, all the dishes are done. Yes. <laughs> I feel like you should just like never drink rosé again. Why? Just because reasons. I like this rosé. Yeah, but like rosé, like just in general. I mean, I know it's like kind of a basic bitch drink, but it, it doesn't is. have to be. I always consider like the rosé of the basic bitches to be like on the sweeter side, but maybe I could be yeah, wrong. Right. Or I'm like sure a, there's some basic bitches out there who like dry rosé cuz I'm a basic bitch. Well, there's also like Rieslings. Rieslings are like kind of like a like a oh. entry level like sweet wine. Yeah. Like Riesling, Moscato. Oh my god, I cannot stand Moscato. It's so sweet. Okay. Foul. Um on Moscato. I'm fond. That's the only kind of Moscato I like. I'm fond Moscato. City Council. So, uh, if you didn't notice, I'm switching to the True Blue 100. It tastes like buttered popcorn in a glass. That is all. That's all. <laughs> that is all from your local representative. <laughs> Yeah, Riesling even gets a little too sweet for me. Mm -hmm. I can only do it if I have really spicy food. Spicy food yeah. with a sweet drink. Mm -hmm. That's like the the pairing. If you're going to do, like the spicier the food, the sweeter the wine should be. A nice ring. Hmm. I like it. Um, You know what's interesting about like drinking whiskey? Like most... Um, pairings like you were saying like you're kind of supposed to do um opposites right mm -hmm. so like if you have like something super sweet you should pair it with something you know savory because it counteracts each other whiskey interestingly is the opposite like i've found at least for my palate that like the only thing i like whiskey with is other sweet things it's hmm. so like salt and savory foods like amplify all of the worst flavors in whiskey for me. Whereas if I eat like chocolate or like a brownie or caramel or, you know, some type of um, candy, mm -hmm. um, it actually amplifies all of the like cool, like unique flavors in whiskey. Whereas like you would think it would be the opposite. Like yeah. you, you would put, you would put your palate through something salty and savory and then the sweet unique flavors in the whiskey would come out. But the opposite is true for me. Hmm. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I wonder why that is. If you make whiskey, please let us know. Ooh, yeah. Maybe we should um, ask my cousin to sponsor the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you do have a cousin who is a distiller. I do. I do. In Nashville. Mm-hmm. We'll oh, Nashy. Oh, Nashville. Nash. Do you like Nashville? I do like You've Nashville. been a couple times. Yeah. i I've been, I guess more as, yeah, as an adult. I went once as a kid. Um, and then once for like a bachelorette oh, party, but you know. I what feel kind like of kid? Like, like kid kid? No, or I was like... 15. I did a, um, I was a choir kid and I did a competition down mm. there with the concert choir of Mount DeSales. Let's see. I don't remember what, ha I think we did well. I don't really remember. Um, but we like went to a show at the Grand Ole Opry um, I saw Kelly Pickler. <laughs> she was like big at the time. Wasn't she the American Idol one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I, that's like all the, I, there were other people there. Like there were other country music stars who yeah. did that show. But Kelly Pickler was the only one I remembered because <laughs> I'm not like a huge country person. Yeah. Well, we'll have to change that. Yeah. I'm getting into it. Yeah. Yeah. I can, and I can appreciate some of it. Like if it borders on like kind of older country, I don't like pandering country. Mm, like the poppy, like yeah. annoying shit. Mm -mm. 
Like, where, like, I, I the like, guys, like, like, always, like, like, I'm working on the field. And I'm like, you've on never farm, worked on a field burp, 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 a day burp. in your life. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't he, lie about he, it. He, he says with acid wash jeans yeah, and a right. uh, crew cut. I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't I, know. Like, like I think Johnny I can. Cash. I think I can convince you that Nashville is a cool city. I like Nashville. You don't have to convince me. Yeah, I like Nashville. We'll I don't know. I feel like over the last like ten years, Nashville's kind of like lost a lot of its soul. Yeah. Like growing up there, like most of the things that made Nashville cool, or at least to me, you know, um, have all kind of turned into these like crappy like mass market like annoying i mean it's always kind of had the the heart of like country music and like christian music and but like downtown nashville has turned into this like weird like shell of itself that's just like this huge money grab for like huge bars and like like crappy musicians well they call it like nash vegas for a reason i mean like that's why Mm. bachelorettes like to go there it's like if you can't get all the way to vegas you can go to nashville and you get that kind of like party vibe especially on that like that broadway strip Mm -hmm. you know and i did it we enjoyed it it was great for the bachelorette that we went to but i don't know if i would want to do it again yeah like i i'm when I ever I go somewhere, I'm like, I want the local scene. I mm-hmm. want, I think yeah. I even remember at, at dinner, like we went out to dinner before we went out, out. And mm-hmm. I remember asking the waiter, like, you know, where would you find yourself like right, on a night right. like tonight? Like, what would you do? We gave this the- whole list and nobody wanted to do any of that but me. <laughs> I was like, well, like, well I'm a team player. I'm tequila cowboy it is. Yeah. <laughs> Honky tonk it is. <laughs> Ultimately, it was a really fun time. We had a good time. And I'm glad I did it because I think that was like the time. Like now, I would never want to do that. And yeah. I would have missed the window. So I'm yeah. glad that I did it. It's like, it's fascinating like to go home like on vacation, like seeing like Broadway, which used to be when I was a kid, all of the bars on Broadway were like biker bars. Yeah. Like you would go on a Saturday <laughs> night and literally all of like the whole section of that's Broadway so that's just like, like cordoned off by like the little barriers used to just be bikes. Yeah. Bike, 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 bike. Like the whole, it was just bikers <laughs> the whole way. And then all like the young kids went on second Avenue. Mm-hmm. Did like, we even go to second Avenue last time we were there? Um, I feel like we walked down it, but like okay. there's nothing to go down there. That's kind of my point. Like got, now, like yeah. sec, Second Avenue is kind of a ghost town. Hmm. Like there's a couple like like uh, the Wild Horse Saloon. Yeah, we did go there because we went to the we walked by the Wild Horse Saloon. Okay, um, we'll have to go next time we're there. But yeah, like the Spaghetti Factory and like Dicks and like the Melting Pot and like all these kind of like commercialized like um, places are on Second Avenue now. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, back then, that was kind of the club place. It was, like, Grand Central Station and, like, all okay. of these, like, kind of, like, where the younger crowd mingled. Whereas, like, now, everybody's on Broadway. Yeah. And, like, Second Avenue is, like, ghost town. It's, where do the, it's super weird. And the bikers just I was going to say, where do the bikers hang out? They've all, they've all <laughs> gotten too old and moved to the suburbs. <laughs> like my mom. I was about to say, like your mom. <laughs> my mom was totally, like, a Harley chick back in the day. Yeah. She was full on, like, rode on the back of a Harley, like, oh one of those God. big, big motherfuckers with, like, the full <laughs> seat in the back. I would have loved to have met your mom, like, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just big fake tits and a tank top. <laughs> you went to Sturgis, Sturgis and, uh, fuck, I have a t-shirt. I want to say, like, the late 90s, like, 98, oh, 99, classic. maybe. So good. Where's the t-shirt? Uh, I don't know. It's gone. No. It's it's lost to the abyss of the past. Ugh. Would have been such a gem. Uh, I went to St. John's the other day to get the necklace that you got me resized, mm-hmm. and they still have those Harley earrings there. Ooh, I really the want to get them for your mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell her. She might be watching this. <laughs> I mean. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, friends, lovers, if your family goes to Sturgis when you're in your developmental years and leaves you behind at home to fend for yourself and cook your own dinners and take care of your little sister. Forgive them.
they love you, probably. But if they don't, buy your own t-shirt, buy your own tank top, and go to Sturgis next year. The motorcycle community will welcome you with open arms as long as you're not black or Mexican or Asian. They'll be happy to have you. (laughs) And on that note, we love you. See you next time. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) 